Hey everybody, what's going on? Eric here. Hope you guys are doing good. I'm doing great. Today I'm finally going to be able to do a little video on the ESP Eclipse E2 2021 in the faded blue. Stay tuned. So I've had the E2 for a while now, and that is the Faded Blue ESP Eclipse E2 with the EMG pickups on there and the Goto hardware. I've had it for a while now, just haven't been able to get around to get a chance to have some free time to do a video about it or even go through the setup and make sure that everything is kind of you know where it's supposed to be. Right here you are looking at the ESP LTD Deluxe Eclipse 1000 and although these two guitars are pretty similar they are a lot different so the cheapest price I could find for the Deluxe it was on reverb for six hundred and ten dollars used and new you can expect to pay a little over a thousand dollars only bad thing about buying used is well you're going to find some problems with it in this case here is a chip right there on the top of the body on the back and there's some scuffing on the back of it as well otherwise for 600 bucks it's not bad so trying to find one of these used, all I could find was a B stock on Reverb and it's $1,600 for this thing used and new you're expected to pay a little over $2,000. Now B stock, eh, could have a problem with it, could have a scratch and it, could have you know a ding in it, could have some problems with the paint. This one here has got a little bit of a problem with the paint on the back of it, not too much of a big deal, um, but yeah still looks nice still has all the same features although both bodies look similar they're both made out of mahogany the deluxe has a hand cut out for reaching the lower part of the neck and they both have belly cutouts on them but when you measure the body the red one looks like the deluxe looks like it's actually wider but no it's not it measures out at 13 inches on the dot and the e2 measures out to be about three sixteenths over So here's more of the specifications for both of these guitars. What really sets these two apart is the E2 neck pickup is an EMG 66 with the split and bridge is a 57 with the split. Meanwhile, the Deluxe is equipped with a set of EMG 60 in the neck and 81 in the bridge. And did I mention that both guitars are active? Both guitars has a set of locking tuners. The E2 has a set of Godo locking tuners along with a Godo locking tailpiece and tunematic bridge. The Deluxe has a set of locking tuners as well, but they are just an ESP, I guess, in-house brand locking tuner. The E2, just like the Deluxe, has got a flawless finish on it. Couldn't ask for anything better than the, what ESP has done with these guitars or LTD. The fretwork on this is amazing. I couldn't do anything better myself. The binding, everything on this guitar is pretty much, you know, what you would see on a real high quality guitar as far as finish, fit, and everything else goes. The nut, the nut on this guitar, well, you know, I haven't even seen Gibson do a nice job as what these guys have done. Now, as far as setup goes, that's going to be another story. All right, so now we got the fun part of this, doing this setup. Now, this has been taken out of the box, put off to the side, and basically sat for, well, I don't know, since the last time I made the first video of doing the unboxing. 
But one thing I noticed about this guitar when I first did the unboxing of it and kind of checking things out, that the neck was like straight, straight as a board. The action height on the low and the high string were uh, 360 fourths on the low E and the high E. And uh, yeah, it looks like the tailpiece needs to come up a little bit too because it looks like it's the strings are resting on the bridge. So it's gonna need a little bit of work. So the one thing I wanna do is basically, it's already in tune, is check out how much relief I have, if any. And there is nothing there at all. I wanna give this a 10 thousandths instead of my normal 12. So I'll give this a couple of turns at a time. See where it puts me. Almost. Use a little bit more. I'd say right there will be good. Right there looks good to me. And check the tuning of this. These go to go to locking tuners feel really nice. Nice and smooth. There's no play in the gear as you go forward or backwards with them. All right, so she's in tune there. So, like I said, action height on this before was 360 fourths on the high and the low. So let's see how much has changed now. Yeah, so now it's about a 16th on the low side and a 16th on the high side. So what does it sound like as far as fret buzzing goes? The action height at the first fret can actually go down just a hair nothing dead so like I said if there was a tailpiece needs to go up a little bit because string yeah it needs to go up high E string is sitting right on top of there that's all right that's all right that's all right that can go up a little bit and that can go up all right so tailpiece has got to be moved up. That's a hell of a lot better than what it was. Now it's going to be detuned. Not action height. I could probably live. I can live with that. That's not going to be too bad. Let's see if I still have some relief. If it changed any. No, it feels the same way. So I got the tailpiece, the relief done, the nut. I don't have to worry about. Check out the intonation now. Spot on. It's 
spot on. That can go forward a little bit. Little bit of buzz. It's not going to kill me at all. All right, so everything looks like where I want it. Check the height of the pickups now. A little bit on the close side. This side's fine. It's perfect. The base side is a little bit high. Better. Check the treble side. See, I kind of moved that up a little bit by angling it. It's all right. Hey, setup is done.